next thing that we're going to have to deal with in C++ is function calls. So functions are basically methods from Java. Same idea, just different names. Um, so if I want to not do everything in my main method, which is probably a good plan, um, I can declare another function. For example, let's say I want to create a power function. What I do to declare that is I give it some sort of type I'm going to return. For example, a float. I'm going to call mine pow, because you know Java has math.pow, so C++ should have pow as well. And then I put any variables that are going to be called in the parentheses. So for example, I might do have the power be an x and have the float be your original base. So it'll look something like this. So what is the type of thing that you're actually going to return? Here's the name of the method. Um, so just like variable names, it's, you can name your methods pretty much the same ideas. Uh, letters and numbers, as long as the first thing is a letter, and underscores. And then parentheses. By the way, you don't have to be passing information in. You could have just uh, a method that just runs some code inside of it that you just want to repeat. So like if you have a section of code that you do over and over and over again, rather than retyping those lines over and over, you can just create a function to do it. Um, and then over here, this is the type of thing that you're going to return. If you're not returning anything, you use the special keyword void. So my floating point one, I give the type of thing that's coming in to the parameters. I give them names. And then I do things in this function body down here. So for example, I might want to, so really powers are repeated multiplication. So I could do this with a for loop. So I'll do about int i starts at 0, i is less than x, i plus plus. And then I will keep track of an answer. And let's start that at whatever a is. And then we'll do answer equals answer times a. And then when I'm all done, I'll return my answer. So to actually call this thing, like from the main method, up here what I do is I do pow. Well, let's actually save it off. So float um, number, let's do 3.0. I'll have the power be 2. And actually, that has to be an int. Or the types have to match. And then we'll have result equal pow number power. So you can use variables as long as the types match, or you can actually just directly put things in. So I could have put in two here. And then if I uh, just print out what result is, let's see what that is. I'm intentionally making a mistake here, but we'll see in a sec what's going on. So if I do example, example.cpp. So I'm getting this. Power is not declared in this scope. So those of you who are used to Java are like, this looks totally fine. What's going on? So it turns out in C++, right here, when I declare power, it doesn't know what that is. Because C++ actually, uh, when, a, when the compiler is going through your code, it starts at the top and it keeps going down to, until it reaches the bottom, which means that because power is defined down here below main, it doesn't know what that is. Java is clever enough to look through the whole uh, section of your code before it throws that error, but C++ is not. So what you have to do is something called a function prototype. You basically say this part of the line, which says what the function is going to do and what the function is going to return and what its arguments are. So these are called uh, formal arguments. So up here at the top, what I'm going to do is say, all right, float, pow, give it a name, and then just a semicolon at the end. 
So this is a function prototype. Now I'm allowed to use power, and it's going to assume that it's there uh, when it gets to it. So if I go over here now, now it compiles fine. So let's see. 3 squared, I am doing this wrong. It's actually got to be 1 less than that. There we go. And does this give me 27 when I test it out? All right, so there we go. Because we started 0, I have to go up to 1 less. Um, all right, so that gives me um, functions. And so one thing to note is that this thing here, this is called an actual parameter, where these are the formal parameters, or arguments is another name for it. In Java, we call them parameters. In um, C++, they're often called arguments. So the formal arguments are the type and what variable name you're going to assign to it. So whatever this thing up here is, number, it get, gets reassigned the name A inside of power. It actually makes a copy of it, to be honest. So A gets a copy of whatever's inside number, and then you can do things in here. Now, the reason this matters is that um, if I go in here and try also printing out um, number is And let's put in the answer is. So let me recompile that, run it. So the number I'm starting with is 3 here, this number right there. What happens if I go inside of here, and before I return my answer, I just say, all right, A, you're now 27. So I'm going to change this value here. Is that going to have any effect on number? Let's see what happens. No, it doesn't. So because this is a copy of things, um, if I change any of these things, a and x, any of these uh, parameters, it doesn't actually change the original value outside here. The actual parameters are not touched. You can mess with the formal parameters all you want, and as soon as you leave the method, then it goes back to its original form. Um, oh, one other thing I should probably mention. Um, notice that for floating point, I return the answer when I'm all done. So if you're going to return something, make sure you do it. If you have a void and you just want to exit the method, you can just say return. That's a valid line. And if you get to the end bra uh, brace of the method before you have a return statement, it assumes you're just going to return. All right, so what if I want to make it so that I, um, I actually alter this original value? Well, one more thing that I want to do is uh, I want to talk about uh, the scope of things. So scope means how long particular variables live. So this floating point var variable here, answer, this only lives in this method. As soon as I return answer, the space used for this variable goes away. If I create variables that I want to be used, be used throughout, generally speaking, you want to declare them outside of any particular method. So if I want to have a character array that everybody can use, oops, that's the Java version. So if I want to have this so that everybody can talk about input, I would actually declare it out here. So any global variables end up out here. Local variables can be declared inside of it. And actually, this is technically a local variable that only lives inside the for loop. The same is true of these formal parameters. These formal parameters only live inside of pow. As soon as pow is done, they get thrown away. So what if I want to actually alter this original number value? Well, that's where the idea of passing by reference comes from. So what I'm doing here is I'm making copies when I pass it in. This is called passing by value. It takes a copy of the value and puts it in there. 
So let me do a slightly different one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to do something where I alter it, something like this. So I'm going to pass in, using this ampersand, the actual variable. So this is an example of pass by reference. So I'm going to basically do the same sort of thing. i is 0, i is less than x, minus 1, i plus plus. Answer, I could do times equal, but I'll spell it out so it's exactly the same. a is 27, return, answer. So if I go up here, I call the number after this result. Let's try doing result is power reference. And then I'm going to see out those two things again. See out. Answer is result. So that's saved. Power reference is not declared. Oh, yes. I've made a new very, uh, method. I should declare up here. So remember, I have to do this function prototype in order to actually refer to power reference later on. So notice this time when I call the power of reference uh, variable over here, what's happening is, is when I declare a to be 27 here, it actually alters the original value passed in the parentheses. So what's going on under the hood is the memory location is actually passed in when you see this ampersand. So the memory location of a is passed in, which means that if I'm altering a, I'm altering whatever this thing out here was as well. So when I say a is 27, I'm actually altering number up here. So that's what pass by reference is. It's referring to the memory location of where it was. Um, so some, a reason this might be useful is, let's say that we want to make a um, method that swaps the location of integer values. So I'm going to create a void swap a. So I'm going to make that swap variable. By the way, you are allowed to technically use different names here and here, as long as the types match. A weird thing about C++. So I'm going to go ahead and take and make a temporary variable. And I'm going to say a equals b and b equals temp. And for an exercise, consider why I had to actually take three steps to do that. That's kind of interesting. So now if I go back up here, if I create an int, um, George is a 7 and Fred is a 3. I swap George and Fred, and then I say, all right, George, what number are you? And then Fred. So I started with 7, 3, and then I do the swap. It actually alters the original position of George and Fred, even though the ver it's done inside of this method because I'm changing their memory locations. And then it prints them out in the swapped order. 
All right, so that should get you started on the ability to use functions in your programs.